forgetting the Washington angle for the moment, I'd like to mention America's love affair with euphemisms and euphemistic language. I think Americans have some difficulty dealing with reality and have invented a kind of soft language to protect themselves. And this tendency to euphemize, if that's a, a verb, uh, increases, it, it seems, with every generation. Here's an example. There's a well-known condition in combat when a fighting man's nervous system has been stressed to the breaking point and he's either snapped or is ready to snap. In the First World War, that condition was known as shell shock. Simple, honest, direct language, two syllables, shell shock. Almost sounds like the guns themselves. That was over 80 years ago. Then an entire generation passed, and in the Second World War, the very same combat condition was called battle fatigue. Four syllables now, takes a little longer to say, doesn't seem to hurt as much. Fatigue is a nicer word than shock. Shell shock. Battle fatigue. <laughs> then we had Korea, 1950. Madison Avenue was riding high. And the very same combat condition was called operational exhaustion. We're up to eight syllables now, and the humanity has been squeezed completely out of the phrase. It's absolutely sterile, operational exhaustion. Sounds like something that might happen to your car. <laughs> Finally, of course, there was Vietnam, and given the lies surrounding that war, I guess it's no surprise that the very same condition was called post-traumatic stress disorder. Still eight syllables, but we've added a hyphen, and... <laughs> And the pain is now completely buried under jargon, post-traumatic stress disorder. I'd be willing to bet that if we'd still been calling it shell shock, some of those Vietnam veterans might have gotten the attention they needed at the time they needed it. But it didn't happen. And one of the reasons that the very same condition was called post-traumatic stress disorder. Still eight syllables, but we've added a hyphen. And, and the pain is now completely buried under jargon. Post-traumatic stress disorder. I'd be willing to bet that if we'd still been calling it shell shock, some of those Vietnam veterans might have gotten the attention they needed at the time they needed it.